anyone who watches this video. I bid you all welcome. <laughs> Hey guys, Drew here from um, Horror Sign Pride Beyond. Welcome to the first part of my October horror movie reviews. It's all throughout the month of October. Um, and all ones you saw in the intro, those are ones I'm going to be talking about. And so, the first one I'm going to be talking about today is the classic Universal Monster movies. Specifically, Dracula, Frankenstein, and the Wolfman. Because those are the, um, the holy trifecta. Holy Trinity of Universal Monsters. Also, they're some of the first horror movies that I ever seen. I remember watching Frankenstein for the first time um, after renting it from the um, from the library on a, on a VCR tape, and then maybe a year or two later, um, on October on Halloween specifically, on um, it was either AMC or TMZ they um, so Dracula, Frankenstein, and the Wolfman. And all three of those movies made a huge impression on me. In each one of these movies, there's always one moment that I'll never forget. In Dracula, it's when Renfield um, gets a paper cut and then um, it attracts um, Dracula because, you know, old vampire. Frankenstein, I'll, I'll never forget when he throws the uh, little girl Marie in the um, river. And then Wolfman, I always remember when he, um, Larry Talbot is at the shooting gallery at the, um, at the carnival. And he sees a wolf, and that's what triggers him getting bitten by the wolf, and he eventually turns to the wolf man. Between these sets of movies, the Universal Monster movies as a whole, including all the classic ones, and then the German expressionistic films that, are, that came out um, in Europe um, a decade earlier, I honestly think these two, these movies, those movies were like the biggest influence on horror with. The creamy atmosphere, the lights, the shadows, and all that stuff. Audience never really seen anything like that as far as the universal movies were concerned. You can definitely tell that a lot of um, these directors that were making Dracula, Frankenstein, and all that um, got a big influence on Dr. Caligari and Note for Off, dude, which were the two biggest German expressionist films of the time. I think another reason what makes these movies so special is that besides Dracula and the Invisible Man, you actually, um, there's a bit of sympathy towards these characters. Frankenstein Monster was just an amalgamation of different human body parts kind of um, put together, and he kind of misunderstood Monster. The Wolfman, Larry Talbot, had a um, life before he got bitten by a werewolf. And you can probably tell with the with my shirt, my, my Wolfman shirt, the Wolfman is definitely my favorite out of all the Universal Monster movies. It's even in my top, like, five favorite horror movies of all time. There's something about that movie, um, the fact that, um, Long Caney Jr. was the son of Long Caney Sr., who was famous for Quasimodo and the Phantom of the Opera and all that stuff. Um, he had a really rough patch early on in his career. Uh, he wasn't getting a lot of work. Um, his father made him become a plumber. Um, and it wasn't until A uh, Mice and Men that he really hit it big. And that's where I got part of a lot of the monster roles. And then Frankenstein is a classic tale. Super philosophical. Um, just in general, not any particular version of it. I suppose Dracula with what Clyde Baker um, called it um, in the documentary on the... Um, on most TV that you'll get from that movie. He be Cry Barber basically said Dracula was a 19th century um, romantic trashy novel, essentially. That's what it is. It's just fun. And that's definitely one of my least favorite um, Universal Monsters. Um, that atmosphere is great. Um, Bella Lugosi is amazing. Not my favorite Dracula, though. That would go to Christopher Lee. I think Lee had a little bit more, more of the sinister side and the charming side. But um, definitely Bell Lugosi is really, really good. He's just a bit too charming for me. He, and, he, and, I, and I think that's why he's my least favorite out of the big four between um, him, Matt Frank, um, Gary Oldman, and um, 
Christopher Lee. Winfield, um, the guy that played Winfield right by, amazing. Like, he's crazy. And that's the one thing I've noticed about a lot of these movies, is the person playing the monster is fantastic, and then there's always, like, a supporting character that's very good. That's that's really good, too. With this, it's Big Old Ghosty and Dwight Fry on um, Frankenstein, it's Sproul's Call Off and um, Colin Clive. And the thing about it, these movies aren't very scary, per se. They're more creepy and atmospheric. So they were the first people, Universal was the first studio to do this gimmick. They're one of the first people to do this gimmick where they basically would advertise it as the most scary movie of all time. And they would even like hire actors to like pass out like in the middle of theater and um, like have news reports on that. And then we, we certainly see that today with movies like Paranormal Activity and like um, Green Inferno, um, the Evil Dead remake. And that's another reason why they're influential on that. Say, as far as marketing and how um, Lemley Jr., Carl Lemley Jr. market the, um, these movies. That's just my quick thoughts on the um, on Dracula, Frankenstein, and Wolfman. Um, um, great movies. Um, I can't go on October without watching any of them. So yeah, that's my review. And um, stay tuned for my um, for my other video or my other reviews. Um, this month. And um, thanks for watching guys. And over and out. Bye.